Hola, soy yo Vicky otra vez. Buenos días. ¿Cómo estás? Hope you're all well out there, uh, enjoying the summer. Um, what we're going to do today in el video de hoy, in today's video, uh, vamos a mirar el vocabulario del médico. We're going to look at the vocabulary that you might need if you're going to the doctor. Uh, hopefully you won't need it, pero... You know, it's uh, inevitable, no, que un día tienes que ir al médico. It's quite inevitable that one day you might have to go to the doctor for something. So, first of all, doctor in Spanish, you can use doctor or doctora. So, you, if that's easier to remember, you can use that for the actual word for doctor. Uh, but also we have médico or médica. So, again, masculine or feminine, depending if it's a man or a woman. If you're talking about doctors in general, we don't know if they're men or not, and or if we don't, if there's, you know, a mixture of men and women, the masculine as always takes the precedence. So, doctor, medico, doctora, medica, they would be your actual name uh, for doctors. We don't use that in Spanish, like when you're going to the doctors. You know, when we say in English, oh, I'm going to the doctors. Uh, you don't use that in Spanish. You'd, you wouldn't say, you, you'd say, voy al centro de salud. Yeah, a ver el médico. I'm going to the health center to see the doctor, not I'm going to the doctors. Okay. Uh, right, okay, so vamos a ver. ¿Qué palabras tenemos para mirar? So, the first one, quite easy. Um, if you want to say that something's inflamed or swollen, you would use inflamado or inflamada, depending if it's masculine or feminine. Now, the verb you would use with this, of course, is the verb estar, because hopefully it won't always be like that. It's a temporary state. So, if you were saying, like, oh, my face is swollen, mi cara está inflamada, yeah, or... I don't know, my wrist is swollen or my hand is swollen. So for the parts of the body, uh, I think I have a video on the parts of the body somewhere in the, in the depths of my videos, but you can always, you need to learn those separately. I'm not really going into the parts of the body in this video. So you need to look at those separately. Just, this is just really how you would describe ailments, this video. So see, mi mano está inflamada. Or you might say, tengo la mano inflamada as well. Sometimes you might say that. Uh, and that is swollen or inflamed. We like the easy ones, don't we? If something's sensitive, so this is a false friend because you see sensible and you think, oh, that means sensible. It doesn't mean sensible. It means sensitive. So, again, if you're saying, oh, my face is very sensitive, mi cara está muy sensible. This one doesn't change for masculine or feminine. So, yeah, remember, sensible is sensitive, not sensible. A nice, easy one. Irritado or irritada. So, this does sound like uh, the English, so... Words that sound like the English are always easier, hoping that they're not false friends. So you might say, oh, uh, mi ojo está irritado. Yeah, my eyes irritated. And if it's very important, urgent, in fact, now again, an easy word, but a completely different pronunciation. Urgente. Yeah, es urgente, it's urgent. Es urgente. If you're trying to say that something's hurting you, now they do say this in a completely different way. We do say this in a different way in Spanish. So instead of my arm or legs hurt or hurts, we would use in Spanish, you say, uh, my arm or the arm hurts, it hurts me. Or the legs, they hurt me. So a bit like we use with gustar, if you know about the verb gustar. So, me duele el brazo. That's singular. Me duele el brazo. My arm hurts. 
But if it was plural, like legs, me duelen las piernas. My legs, they hurt me. Okay, so me duele or me duelen for something that hurts. Okay. Or we can use, we can say in this way. A uh, tengo dolor de cabeza, la cabeza. I have a pain in the head. Tengo dolor de la cabeza or tengo dolor de los ojos. So this doesn't change from uh, uh, masculine or feminine or singular or plural. Tengo dolor de la cabeza. I have a headache or I have a pain in my head. Tengo dolor de los ojos. I have a pain in my eyes. So it could, it could be mis piernas or lo, las piernas, eh, la mano, la nariz, uh, you know, wherever you've got pain, you would tag on to the end. And si has tenido un accidente con un fuego, if you've had an accident with a fire, you might have a quemadura, una quemadura. A burn, okay, so quemar is the verb to burn y una quemadura is a burn. Vale, so if you want to say I burnt myself, you'd say me he quemado, because you use it like a verb then, I have burnt myself, or you say I have a burn on my arm, tengo una quemadura en el brazo. Yeah, notice that they don't tend to... Uh, personalized parts of the body in Spanish. They tend to say the arm or the head or the uh, leg. But it's not wrong to say mi pierna. It's not wrong, it's just perhaps not so common. So you may have una fiebre. Uh, fiebre. <laughs> you might have a fever. Yeah, uh, espero que no, because we'd all be worried that was COVID if we had a fever. So la fiebre, fever. So you say tengo, tengo fiebre, yeah, I have a fever. But you don't have to say ah, you just say tengo fiebre, not tengo una fiebre. And this one, which I love this one, I remember a student telling me this years ago, an English student, and I remember thinking, that's a bit too much information, because uh, está constipado, or constipada for a woman is not what we might think it is. So when my student was telling me that she hadn't come to class because uh, she was constipado or constipada, she, uh, you know, I was sort of, no, I don't know, I really need to know that. Well, of course, she meant she had a cold. Uh, so this goes with the verb estar. So if you're saying I have a cold, you say estoy constipado or constipada. So you won't forget that one, that's for sure. <laughs> it's great when we have words that are completely different, aren't they? This is another one that does make people giggle. Because uh, a cough is a toss. Tengo toss. I have a cough. Uh, so, yeah, very strange. Sort of completely different, really. It always sort of surprises me how they're completely different sometimes, the words. But anyway, la tos, it's feminine. Tengo tos, I have a cough. Again, you don't have to say tengo una tos. You don't say that in Spanish, you say tengo tos. So again, hopefully you won't ever have to say these, but if you do, they'll come in handy, or you might need to say them for somebody else. Dificultad para respirar. Shortness of breath, or really literally, is difficulty in breathing. So, respirar is to breathe, yeah? So, difficultad para respirar is shortness of breath, breath, or difficulty in breathing. Now, if you get to a certain age and you're suffering with blood pressure, either high or low, blood pressure itself is la tensión. Okay, that's actually blood pressure. Now, you may have la tensión alta or you may have la tensión baja. So, alta is high blood pressure, uh, baja is low blood pressure, or you may have la tensión normal. Hopefully, you have normal blood pressure. Or sometimes blood pressure can go up and down when you've got a lot of stress or things going on. 
Okay, Ooh. so mariado or mariada, that's to be dizzy, and we use the verb estar to say, oh, estoy mariada, I am dizzy, or estoy mariado, if you're a man, uh, if you're feeling dizzy. I think this comes from sea, yeah, mar is sea, so I suppose you can go dizzy on the sea if you get seasickness. Another one with the verb, uh, this time with the verb tener, to have. Tengo nausea. Yeah, I feel sick. So I have nausea, I suppose you're saying. So to feel sick is tener nausea. Or you may have overindulged if you're over on holiday and you may have un poco de acidez. Heartburn or acidity. You know, so you can see where that comes from. So if you have heartburn, you have acidez. If you need, you might not need to go to the medical. You might pharmacist. Something to remember in Spain is the pharmacists are like doctors. So quite often you can just go to the pharmacist. The pharmacist will be able to give you something. You know, for these minor things like acidez. You know that you perhaps don't need to actually go to the doctor for. The pharmacist can prescribe something, well not prescribe something for you, but give you something. And I hope you don't suffer from these. I know I don't suffer from these, but I do know people who do and they're awful. La migraña is a migraine. So if you have a migraine, you'd say tengo migraña. Or sufro de migrañas. Uh, you might want to tell the doctor that you do suffer from migraines because I presume that is important in medication and things like that. Or if you're a sports person, or even if you're not, you may suffer from calambre, cramp. Uh, por la noche, quite often in the night, uh, people get cramp, don't they? Calambre, cramp. Okay, and well, I hope you don't get these or you don't know anybody who gets these. But in English, what we call a seizure or a fit in Spanish is normally uh, plural. Las convulsiones. Yeah, I suppose you could say una convulsión. That's so you want to say that someone's had a seizure or had a fit. You'd say uh, ha tenido una convulsión. Yeah, he or she has had a fit. Now, this one, horrible disease if you suffer from it, but uh, it's exactly the same, spelt exactly the same in Spanish. Diabetes, though, is the way it's pronounced. So we say diabetes, God, I can't even say it in English now, diabetes, but in uh, Spanish they say diabetes, okay? It's all in the vowels. You know the vowels are so different in Spanish. Diabetes, not diabetes. Or especially in the summer, you may have allergia a algo. You know, there's so many things we can be allergic to. Uh, you know, perros, gatos, polvo, dust, uh, muchos diferentes cosas. Y eso es una allergia. Allergy is allergia. So you would say tengo allergia. Tengo alergia a, I have a, I am allergic to. And something that we don't see much of nowadays in these COVID days, because we're all wearing masks or at least having um, social distance, uh, is la gripe, flu. It's very, don't really hear of anyone having it these days. So it just shows that social distancing and masks, etc., do work for infections, virus infections. La gripe, so flu is gripe. Are you gripped by the gripe? Hopefully not. Or maybe not quite as serious, you might have un resfrío, to have a cold. Tengo un resfrío, I have a cold. Not quite, again, you don't really hear of many people having these these days. 
So a very common uh, ailment as we get a little bit older. Yo tengo un poco de eso, la artritis. There's not many people haven't got a little touch of this as they get to a certain age. Arthritis, again, similar word but pronounced completely differently. La artritis, artritis, artritis. And if you're over here on holiday, especially you tourists, you be careful that you don't get insolación, sunstroke. It's very common, of course, uh, de vacaciones. And people don't people go out at silly times of the day when the sun's too hot and don't put enough sun cream on, don't drink enough water. Not like me, I've lived here so long, I just hibernate in the summer, so no chance of me getting this at the moment. Insolación, sunstroke. Well, one thing we can't avoid in the summer, uh, no matter what we try, we will probably get some picadoras, some either stings or bites from nasty little critters. Uh, so, in Spanish, picadora can be a bite or a sting. So, it's a picadora de abeca, bee, picadora de avispa, wasp, picadora de mosquito, mosquito or picadora de omega uh, ant they're all picadoras so it doesn't it, there's not a separate word for a bite or a sting as we tend to have in english so it could be a it's a picadora de any of those horrible little insects and si tenemos un accidente if we have an accident which hopefully we won't we might end up with una fa fractura a fracture, again, very similar to the English, but it's fractura rather than fracture. Or any sort of herida we might end up with, uh, an injury, una herida. Remember, we don't pronounce the H, so it's herida. And that's it. So... As I say, I hope none of these things ever happen to you, but if they do, uh, you know, when you go to the doctors or if you have to phone up for somebody else, if you have to phone an ambulance, uh, if you have to take someone to the hospital at the last minute, I think it's always useful to know some vocabulary to take with you. Always research it first and do what you can, even if you don't speak fluent Spanish. I think really it's important to just try and take as much vocabulary with you as you can. But hopefully we will all stay safe and well. So, muchas gracias por mirar. If you feel like giving me a thumbs up, if you found this video useful, please do. That really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed and you want to subscribe, please subscribe. But the most important thing you can do for me is stay safe and uh Que tu Dios vaya contigo y te veo en el próximo video. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego.